The year is 1996. The Nintendo 64 is the most advanced console on the market. It had 64 entire bits. Did the PlayStation have that? I don't think so. If you bought the console at launch in America, you could have countless hours of fun with the two games that came out with it. There were gonna be more, but they all got delayed. Look at the bright side though. If you were in Japan, you could also play Shogi. Hell yeah. But two months afterwards, the sequel to everybody's favorite Game Boy game, Wave Race, reached American shores. Wave Race 64's legacy has far surpassed that of its predecessor, still being fondly remembered to this day. Let's unpack why. Like the previous game, Wave Race 64 was developed by Nintendo EAD, although Hiroshi Yamauchi and Shigeru Miyamoto appear to be the only two people who worked on both games. I wonder if the other guys even knew about Wave Race. Wave Race 64 didn't even start off as a jet ski game. It was shown off at Shoshinkai 95 as, like, a motorboat game? Look at how cool this is! You ride around low-poly Venice, zipping through tunnels, changing your boat shape, and- Uh-oh, the footage just cut off. That, that was it. That was nine seconds. I guess Miyamoto and crew eventually decided that Venice was lame and jet skis were cool because Miyamoto said they wanted to make the game something unique. Given that it was literally being referred to as F-Zero on water internally by Nintendo, it was maybe a little derivative? I assumed that they just adopted the jet skis because the Game Boy game used them, but Chris Seaver, you know, the Conker guy, claimed in an interview that the vehicle swap came at the suggestion of Rare co-founder Tim Stamper. The jet skis tie it in a lot closer to the Game Boy game, especially since you still move between boys. It almost sounds like I'm saying boys. Boys? There doesn't seem to be any connection to that game's plot though, especially since this game like doesn't have a plot. This of course means that Slick Wilson, the sole named character from the original Wave Race, is nowhere to be found. I like to imagine he's still pulling the strings of the jet ski tournament somehow, using all the Cayman Islands money he stowed away. Wave Race 64 has four playable characters. There's like basically no info on these dudes in the game or the manual, but the official the official UK Nintendo magazine has all the answers we crave. First up is Ayumi Stewart, hailing from America. She's the fast one, but does the worst in collisions. Miles Jeter, Jeter, Jetor, from Canada, has good handling, but is bad at turning corners. Ryota Hayami from Japan is an all-arounder, specializing in handling and high speed. So, just like the last two characters, but less bad at corners, I guess. David Mariner, or as the game calls him, Dave, is also from America, and he He's old as dust. I mean, look at him. He's practically a bag of bones. He's the fastest, but his handling is the worst. You better follow the magazine's advice. Don't pick him for stunt mode, unless you're mad. It's a bit strange to me that they have four characters and they went out of their way to make them from different countries, yet two of them are American, but who am I to complain? I'm American. Also, for some reason, the options menu lets you change their names if you want to. I know this because I tried to research the famous Wave Race character, Sarah, only to find that there was no information about her on the entire internet. Actually, all the characters on my cartridge have custom names, and I'm afraid to change them because this was probably some family's copy of Wave Race, and I don't want to erase their history. You can also activate alternate palettes for the characters by pushing up on the D-pad while selecting your guy. In addition to the character's base stats, you can further customize your watercraft's performance, which that magazine goes way too in-depth on. Like, having four characters with very stats just isn't enough. I need my jet ski to be looser. But you don't care about how loose you can make the stupid jet ski. You want me to play the game? I hear you. I'm listening. We're doing championship mode. If we pick normal, you can dip your toes with warm-up mode, getting acquainted with the controls in an open dolphin park. Are you all warmed up? Yeah? Good. Now we're racing for real. Once you get out on the water, you'll be greeted by exceptional controls. Your main goal, as I mentioned, is to ride between buoys. There's something exhilarating about riding the waves and taking in the primitive, primitive scenery. It's genuinely hard to overstate how impressive this water was for the time, both in its appearance and in its physics. Think about it, the original Wave Race barely even had water physics. As far as other 3D stuff, this game's closest contemporary was probably Jet Moto on PS1, and the 
difference, even at a glance, is astounding. Modern Vintage Gamer did a video analyzing how water this realistic was possible on the console. It turns out that the game actually renders out preset wave patterns depending on which part of the course you're on, but the riders themselves don't actually produce waves with their movements. I'm not a coder man genius, so if you want to know the specifics, I recommend you check out that video. Championship mode brings the player through a series of races, earning points depending on how you rank. You need a certain number of points in order to progress through each race. This gets insane on the higher difficulties. I end up running calculations in my head to make sure I can still eke my way through after a bad race or two. Getting first place and having the extra points to throw around gives me a high unlike anything else. It can all fall to pieces if you get complacent though. Each course has its own distinct atmosphere. Sunset Bay soothes the soul with its relaxing evening lighting. Drake Lake is caked in a thick layer of fog that dissipates as the race goes on. Twilight City sucks? No matter what I do, I don't know what corners to cut. I, I don't know how to optimize the time. I've done everything. I've tried riding on the stupid sand because every other stupid racer rides on the stupid sand and every dumb jump just leads me right into the spikes. The spikes! Why are there I spikes this here? So is, it, is this a private course? This, and are they allowed to do this? It. The city scenery is real nice though. You got this sweet building on the lake. It's a vibe. Is that like an office building though? Are people trying to do their jobs while there's a jet ski race outside? The the graphics in general are real crisp, even for 240p. The water obviously steals the show with its immaculate detail, even being dynamically lit. God, I just want to slurp it up. You can tell the game is designed to showcase the console's technical ability. Even the initial screen. Look at the 3D! Look! The letters! The letters are 3D! The courses are also dynamically lit, giving each one a distinct palette. Twilight City is set at nighttime, submerging the player in its deep blues and blacks, contrasted beautifully by the buoys, giving off bright yellow lights. Meanwhile, Sunset Bay's water is a warm orange to match its dimly lit evening atmosphere, while Sunny Beach is a brighter sky blue to match its daytime feel. You can tell a lot of work went into showing off the console's capabilities, while also differentiating every course from one another. The player models are pretty angular, especially up close, but they're animated nicely. When they ride the waves, they look and feel like they have some weight to them. These guys smack against the waves like no one's business. You can even see their faces in all their glory in the ending cutscene. The game in general gets pretty ridiculous as it goes on. I managed to clear Expert, but coupled Twilight City with Glacier Coast and, well, let's just say it wasn't easy. Yeah, that's what this game needed, an ice level. Guess what your jet ski does on the ice? This is probably the most ridiculously precise course in the whole game, and it gets pretty frustrating. This really doesn't seem safe. Do people actually jet ski in icy waters? Is that like, okay? Nothing annihilates the game's fluidity, like suddenly finding yourself stuck, frantically trying to reposition your wave racer. Oh. When you clear the game's main three difficulties, you unlock a bonus reverse cup, and it really commits to the whole mirror mode thing. The signs are still pointing towards the original goal, which is the new starting line. None of the ramps are reversed either, basically turning them into walls that serve as obstacles. The game also has a time trial mode. If you want to grind for the best time, pull up a chair and lend an ear. Open up your copy of the officially licensed Wave Ray 64 Time Attack Expert Book to page 69 and get your learning hat on. Oh, this is Japanese. Luckily, I've prepared a presentation for this exact situation. So, you want to be a wave racer? Well, you're going to need to know the rules of the high seas if you want to take home the gold. Here's some tips and tricks to help you on your journey. Tip, 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 tip one. This ain't no Wendy's burger. Hi, I'm Wendy's founder, Dave Thomas. You want to cut as many corners as possible. Look at this idiot over here, turning all wide and rounded. It's just disgusts me. What? D -d 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 disgusting. But this guy? Oh yeah, baby. He gets it. Nice and sharp. Don't be afraid to get all up in the sand or skip the occasional buoy. Cut those numbers in any way you can. Tip two. The game may be called Wave Race, but the waves are your sworn enemy. If they launch you up into the air, you can kiss that high score goodbye. You've got to try to maintain your momentum by staying in the water as much as possible. If you end up taking a jump, be sure to hit the B button to get back in the ocean as quick as you can. John doesn't know how to do this because he's a moron. Hey! Tip three. 
Whoa, look out! The other racers need a place to park and your ass is looking like free parking. Make sure to keep an eye on those rascally racers so that you don't end up swimming with the fishes like John. Looks like he's got some more studying to do. If they do knock you off your jet ski, mash the A button as fast as you can to get right back up. Isn't that right, John? 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 Tip number four. Any good wave racing student knows that you need to cut corners. I just said it like 30 seconds ago. Keep up. But some tracks have special shortcuts you can find to shave off even more precious seconds. Check out this one on Twilight City. Wait, wait. You can, you can go under that thing? I've been doing I've been doing this wrong the whole time. <clears throat> Anyways, I bet John didn't know about that shortcut. Look at him. He's not even playing the game anymore. You need to get out of my house right now. Get out. Get the fuck out. Go away, go away. Quiz time. All right, let's see what you've learned. Do you have what it takes to be a wave race master? Question one. If Anna boards train A at 9 a.m. going 37 miles per hour, while Erica boards train B at 11 a.m. going 40 miles per hour, well, uh, wait, 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 what's, what's going on? What's happening? Aw, man. Mom? Mom, did you take over my video game? I told you not to go into my room! That's my area! How am I ever gonna get good at Wave Race when all that's on the tape is gone? This game also has stunts. Take that, Bam Margera. Ha, <laughs> he fell down. Doing specific inputs with the analog stick will allow your character to show off their mad jet ski skills. For example, if you let go of the A button, press up, and then hold down, you'll do a handstand on the handlebars. There's some unique stunts you can do off ramps, too, like if you press left as you're going up and right while you're in the air, you can do a barrel roll. I personally like trying to land a sick trick immediately before finishing a race so I can see it up close. In fact, I'm tired of racing all these other losers. I crave thrills. <gasps> Stunt mode is basically a score attack sort of mode based around these. Your goal is to get as many points as possible by navigating through rings and pulling off six stunts. You have a limited amount of time, but you get more by crossing checkpoints. Assuming you don't run out of time, each playthrough ends when you cross the start line, which only takes 30 to 40 seconds. This makes it perfect for a short burst of fun. It can get pretty frustrating not being able to top the high score though, especially when the announcer mocks you every time. <laughs> So smug. Also, if you do a run of Dolphin Park and you manage to pull off a handstand riding while standing, a backward spin, a backflip, a dive, a barrel roll, and a half backwards barrel roll, while also getting through all the rings and not running out of time, you'll hear a little dolphin boy at the end of the race. And then you'll see wave racers on dolphins on the title screen. And then you can ride them in warm-up mode, making this the best game Nintendo has developed since Super Mario World. Kinda lame you can't ride them in the rest of the game, but I'm just grateful they're here. The dolphins mostly control like the regular jet ski, and they even wait around for you to get back on if you fall off of them, but they don't have the full arsenal of stunts. You can at least do a couple like the backflip though. It's still a fun bonus. Oh, what do we have here? Multiplayer. You can only play with two people, so it's no Mario Kart 64, but I'm honestly pretty impressed with what we've got here. You do a single race at a time with every course in the game available. You can even select any difficulty, so you can share the joy of ramming into spikes and backwards ramps with your friends. There's no CPUs, and the graphics are compromised a bit, with the buoys lacking text and the water being heavily simplified, but it still looks better than Sony's stupid water. Bet you guys are feeling pretty stupid for having PS1's now, aren't you? Good. Guys? Guys? Wave Race 64 soundtrack also slaps. It encapsulates the pristine beauty of the ocean as you glide through the natural splendor of the waves. And also, it's 1996. Some of these instrument choices just hit you right in the face and pose that immortal question, will you get N or will you Get out. The bass is unreasonably deep and full. Pull up to the club with this game soundtrack blasting on your subs and watch the heads turn as Twilight City woos everyone in a five mile radius. The Nintendo 64 sound chip doesn't exactly provide a convincing piano or electric guitar, but that just adds to the vibe. I mean, would Port Blue really be improved if it sounded like anything other than a gross $50 keyboard from Guitar Center that they immediately returned upon completing the soundtrack? Much like the game's predecessor, the sound of your motor humming is a constant, comforting force. It is nice actually having different sounds, though. Along with the music, your playable character will emit various grunts and groans. There's also
also the announcer, voiced by John Hulaton, to provide moral support. You are a great wave racer. He sounds borderline sarcastic sometimes. Banzai! Oh my god, he sounded genuinely excited there. Good for him. There's also a separate voice to provide instruction, telling you how to barrel roll and whatnot. Select your watercraft, please. You gotta time it. Fear? This for those who are scared. They certainly did advertise this game. America's got this dude doing beat poetry or whatever. Water churning tide, turning sun, burning wave crash, head bash, At least Japan got some cool original animation for their commercial. The beginning of this is technically used in the US commercial, but in Japan we get to see the racers linger in the air, transitioning smoothly into the gameplay. Even the hut comes on screen, that's cute. The game also got a few magazine write-ups, receiving near-unanimous critical acclaim for its deep gameplay. The game actually has a handful of sponsored ads in it, with the American and Japanese versions being sponsored by Kawasaki, which is noted on the title screen. But, as we all know, jet skis aren't real in Europe. Up, so they took them off. Devastatingly, international versions of the game also removed Japan's Fanta sponsorship, depriving Western audiences of the sweet orange sippy. Western versions of the game also changed Japan's somewhat awkward course names. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that Drake Lake was Milky Lake in Japan. Welcome, Welcome to, to Drake, Drake Lake. Lake. Welcome, Welcome to, to Milky, Milky Lake. Lake. <laughs> A year after the game's initial release, it was re-released with support for the Rumble Pack. They did the same thing with Mario 64, took out the backwards long jump, made the speedrunners cry. I don't think Wave Race 64 Shindo Edition made anyone cry, I, I guess unless you like the original music for some of the courses, because they changed those for some reason. Mm, yeah, the song for the serene beautiful beach is okay, but do you know what it's missing? MIDI guitar. I played way too many video games growing up as a kid. There's this one game for the Nintendo 64 called Wave Race, right? Oh my god, I was just trying to make a dumb Weezer joke, but it looks like Owl City actually is a good band. Or should I say, a good man. It's it's one guy. Owl City is one guy. The joke is that it's one guy. Some of the sound effects are also different. And they added some new lines for the announcer, which seems strange because no matter what territory you play in, he speaks in English. Great spirit! Maybe the biggest addition is that the game now saves ghost data in the time trial mode for you to race against, represented by dolphins. Oh yeah, speaking of which, you can transfer your your save data via the control pack in any version of the game if you want to race a friend's best time or something. The Shindo release would never come to America, but it was used as the basis for the Japanese Wii U and Switch Online releases, as well as the IQ version of the game. You know, the IQ, the Chinese Nintendo 64 that stored its games on a flashcard and allowed you to buy new ones at special kiosks. You're familiar, of course. Weirdly, the IQ version of the game is the only one to dub the announcer's dialogue into the country's native language, in this case, Chinese. <laughs> this makes it, to my knowledge, the only version of Wave Race 64 where the announcer is redubbed at all. I'd tell you more about why, but I've recorded so much voiceover in post that the length of this video has gone up by over a full minute. It's 5 a.m. I hope you're happy. In August 2007, Wave Race 64 splashed onto the Wii's Virtual Console. All the Kawasaki ads in the game were swapped for Nintendo ones, including ads for the then new Wii and DS Lite. Seeing textures of late 2000s Nintendo consoles hastily slapped into a low poly ancient Nintendo 64 game feels so wrong, especially because Virtual Console releases are usually pretty faithful. Fret not though, my friends, because for the Wii U and Switch Online releases of the game, the original banners were restored, repairing the fractured timeline. Wave Race 64 far eclipsed its predecessor, becoming the 15th best-selling Nintendo 64 game of all time, and beginning Nintendo's beautiful relationship with CG Water. Mario Sunshine owes a debt to Wave Race 64. The game still holds up today in all of its arcadey glory, with both the regular and stunt modes being easy to drop hours on. This game does have a sequel that no one really talks about, but that's for another video. <laughs> Am I right, guys? Hit the old subscribe, am I right? Woo! Yeah. I'm Johnny, and I want to get to the bottom of what they're doing in that skyscraper. Peace. 
Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video on WaveRay64. Big thanks to my $3 patrons Anna Picard, Archagent Everlasting, Bam Bandabuha, Bowties and Glasses, Cowboys in the Hood, Dorochi, Devnal, Don Rouse, etc. etc. Inutsu, Mass Rivers, Mustache Duct Tape, Pigpen, Rams, and Pack Jeff. If you donate a dollar a month on my Patreon, you can get your name in text form at the end of all my main videos, along with access to monthly commentaries on older Johnny videos and behind the scenes stuff and early uploads whenever I feel like it. If you donate three or more dollars, you can get your name read aloud like I just did for these people. See you soon!